Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your tutor, Mr. Chileshe, your math and the science tutor. Today we are in mathematics, looking at a topic called the variation. But before we do that, please hit the red button, subscribe, like and share the video. So that you'll be the first person to be notified, including the people who will be aware about it. Variation is, you know, the common word we use even in our daily language, like English. Variation simply means change to something. So even in mathematics, we'll be looking at the change of variables there. But before, there are some terms which you need to be aware of what they mean, so that when you read the question, you really understand what they mean. So the terms are, the first one, they can use, for example, the term called the, you know, the square of, the square of x, for instance, if we use the letter x, now, if they use the term square of x, that means the x squared. Apart from that, we also have what is called the square root of x. Square root of x, which means you write x inside the square root. Two more. Three, we have the cube of x. Cube of x which means the x to the power 3. Then again, we have the cube root of x. Cube root of x, which means you write the cube root. The cube root has a 3 outside here. Then you write x inside there. So these things you have to be familiar with because they like talking about these in exam questions. So if they say the square root of x, it means x squared, it will say, I mean the square of x, it means x squared, the square root of x, it means you write the square and the x inside the root there, the cube root of x, that is x to the power 3, and the last one there, the cube root of x. Now, when we know about these terms, we have two types of variation, two types of variation, the common types, the two common types of variation, The first one is called the, the direct variation. Direct variation. The direct variation, this is a type of variation where if one variable increases, even the other variable also increases. So the direct variation is when, when, when one variable increases there, even the other also increases. So they bring questions like in y varies directly y varies directly as x y varies directly as x so if they say y varies directly as x it simply mean y is equals to x now for every variation there is what is called the constant of variation is what is called the constant of variation, the constant k, usually represented by letter k. So always you must multiply the constant of variation to the right side of the equation which we are, we are trying to make there. So that is x times k, of which it will give you y is equals to kx. We start with k, because k comes first in the alphabet there. So this is the relationship being described in this statement there. So on variation, the biggest thing you need to know is how to come up the, uh, with the correct equation. After you come up with the correct equation, that's when now we can attempt questions like uh, those that are there. Now, apart from the direct variation, we also have uh, the inverse variation. We have the inverse variation. So the inverse variation this is a type of variation where if one variable increases, the other one decreases. So it's opposite with the inverse, uh, the direct variation there. So in the direct variation, you said when one increases, the other one also increases. But here it's opposite. When one increases, the other one must reduce. So inverse variation. This is the type of variation when one variable increases, the other one reduces. Now, if they say y varies inversely as x, 
y varies inversely as x. What does that mean? How are you? How would you come up with an equation like it, the one we had in the first place here? Now, the word inversely, it means, you know, the reciprocal or the opposite of x. The good term is reciprocal there. All numbers or letters, they are always over 1. So this is x over 1. Now, if they say inversely as x, meaning that the reciprocal of x over 1, which is 1 over x. So, y values inversely as x, meaning 1 over x, then you do not forget the constant of variation. It must always be there. K, of which you have y is equals to 1 times k. We have the k over x. So y is equals to k over x. Now that you have known on how to come up with the equation, we can go ahead and attempt those questions there. The first question reads... Do not forget the biggest issue there is you to come up with the correct equation. Very, very important. Y varies directly as the square of x and y is equal to 96 when x is equal to 4. So, y, I'm going to attempt the first question there, find the value of you know, the constant k in the equation there. So before you find the, this constant k, you must write the correct equation. That's the first thing. So y varies directly as z, the square of uh, x there. So remember, we say if we say the square of x, it means x to the power 2 times z, the constant of variation, which is k. Do not forget that. So y is equals to k x squared, like that. Now, when you come up with the equation, that's when you can attempt to find the constant k using the numbers given in the statement there. The value of y is given is 96, which is equal to k, we don't have, it's the one we want actually, times x, what is the value of x there? The value of x is 4. Now, remember, x is squared, therefore 4 will also be squared. 4 squared is the same as 4 times 4, which is 16. So we have 96 is equals to 16k. We want to find the value of k, so we divide both sides by 16, even there by 16. 16 into 16k, we have k is equals to 16 into 96. How many times does 16 go into 96? It goes there. If you count it properly, you'll find that it goes there six times. Okay? When you find the value of k, which is the first question there, it will be easier now for you to find the, the rest of the question. B, find the value of y when x is equal to 5. We write the equation. The same equation we have made is the same equation to apply on these three questions here. So B y is equals to kx squared. Now, we want the value of y when x is 5. So it means y we don't have. It's the one we want to find. y is equals to k is the one we had found in the first place there, which is 6. So where there is k, we put 6 times the value of x, which is 5 in that case. So remember, x is squared. This will be also 5 squared. 5 squared simply means 5 times 5. We multiply 5 2 times. y is equals to 6 times 8. 5 times 5 is 25. Now, what about 6 times 25? What do we have? 6 times 25. If you count properly, you will find that we have 150. Is equals to 150. You can multiply like this. We have 25 times 6, you know, 6 times 5, that's 30, you write 0, you carry 3, 5 times, I mean 6 times 2, that's 12, 12 plus 3, that is 15, so that's 150. 
y is equals to 150. Without wasting time, let me go to C. Find the values of x when y is equals to 24. Notice the difference here. Here it was find the value of x, y. Here now it is find the values of o, x. That means that we have more than one answer here. We don't have one because that's true. Don't forget, it's the same equation we need to use. y is equals to k x squared. Now we want to find the value of x or the values of x when y is equals to 24. So here we have the 24, which is equals to k, then times x. I mean, where there's x? Okay, we're looking for x, yes, x squared. 24 is equals to, what is the value of k? Well, I forgot to put the value of k, sorry. The value of k there, we found it is 6. So, 6x squared, that's the answer which we have there. Now, our interest is to find the value of x. What is it? We need to remove the 6 by dividing the both sides of the equation. 6 there, 1. 6 there, 1. We have the main with here x squared which is equals to now 6 into 24 because there are four times now the question is asking us to find the value of the values of x not x squared so we need to find ways to get rid of this square or the power and that is by introducing the square root on both sides of the numbers now immediately introduce the square root there here it changes it becomes what is called plus or minus because we have two answers which we can you know, square to get a 4. We have x is equals to plus or minus 2. Therefore, x is equals to 2 or x is equals to negative 2. Because if you say negative 2 times negative 2, we are getting 4. Again, 2 times 2, we are getting 4. That is why we must have two answers there. We don't know which you know, numbers representing x. Is it a negative 2? Is it a, you know, a positive 2? So we need both of them. That's why they say the values of who? x. But some questions will contain, who have the diagram like this one, like example 2 there. Some questions will have a diagram like example 2. How can you attempt that? Chalk is a bit sticky. Yeah, it's tough, it's tough, it's tough. I'll do it. I'll do it a bit. One second. Okay, okay, okay. It's done. Just wanted me to apply some balls. Okay. Question two. It is given that uh, y values inversely as the square of x. The table below shows some values of x and the corresponding values of y. You can read the table there. On top is representing the values of x, down here the values of uh, y. Find the value of k, the constant of variation. So to answer this question, we must come up with the equation describing this relationship. Y values inversely as a square of um, x. We start with y, of course, since it's on the first part. Y values in inversely as x as the square of x that's x squared so remember said inversely we are talking about the reciprocal of x over 1 which will be 1 over x squared so inversely 1 over x squared times the constant of variation k do not forget that y is equals to k over x squared now to find the value of k since we have a box, we must choose a box which have the, both the values of x and y. We cannot choose this one. Because here, of course, we have 6, but we don't have there. Neither can we choose that one. So therefore, we're going to go, or we have to choose this one, which has both the values of x and y, for the first question there. So what is the value of y in that box we have just gotten there? It's 9, which is equals to constant k, the one we want, over x, what's the value of x there? 2, and it is squared. 9 is equals to k over 
2 squared, which is a 4, that is 2 times 2, is it? You multiply 2 to 10. You raise this one as a fraction, and you cross it, multiply. So k is equals to 4 times 9. If you can multiply quickly or correctly, you're going to have a 36. So the constant k is equals to 36. We have answered the first question. Now look at the question B. Find the value of um, A. Where is A? We check the box where A is. A is there. We want to find the value. Using the same equation. Y is equals to K over X squared. A is representing the value of Y in this uh, equation. Why have we said that? Because it is found in this row representing the value of y, the values of y. So where there is y, we are putting a, because the one we want, which is equals to what is the constant there? We have 36 over x. What is the value of x when we are looking for a? The value of x on top there is 6. And it is squared, remember? So we have uh, a is equals to. 36 over 6 squared, 6 squared is 36 as well, 6 squared is 6 times 6, so we have a 36. A is equals to 36 into 36 is 1. So question B, we have answered that is 1. The last question, but not the least, the values of P. Again, they have repeated that, they have used the plural the with their values of P. We are using the same equation. Do not forget that. We must have the same equation. So we have um, y is equals to k over x squared. We want the value of uh, b. Now in this equation, b is representing the value of x. Now what is the value of y when, when x is b, y is 4. So where there is y, we are putting 4 is equals to the constant k, which would happen to be 36, over the value of x, in that case, it's b squared. We raise this one as a fraction to balance the equation, and we cross multiply. Now, 4 times b, we have 4b squared, which is equals to, we have 1 times 36, that is 36. Now, we divide both sides by 4, even there by 4, of which we will have, um, of which we have uh, 4 into 4b squared will remain with uh, b squared, b squared, which is equal to 4 into 36, we have uh, 9. We still want to find b, not b squared, so we need to remove this square by introducing the square root in both sides of the equation. Now, whenever we do that, don't forget there is a plus or minus which comes about. So, the square root and the square cancels. We have remained with b, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9, that is 3. Therefore, b is equal to 3, or b is equal to negative 3. Those are the two answers. Now, sometimes you find a question where they combine the direct variation and inverse variation. I'm going to do, I'm going to record the lesson tomorrow on that, so that we see how can we answer such kind of question when they combine direct variation and inverse variation on the same question. Okay, so for today, we end here, and thank you for watching. Thank you so much for listening and paying attention. Please don't forget to subscribe again, and you know, like and share the video so that you you can be benefiting from my videos always. Have a good day.